Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokos here at the Libertarian National Convention of 2018, New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm here with Stuart Flood. He is the current chair of the South Carolina Libertarian Party. And the reason I'm interviewing him today is not just, hey, another awesome state chair of the Libertarian Party, but he was elected in 2015 and has faced some interesting challenges walking into a difficult situation. Is that right, well, Stuart? We had 10 organized counties, and my first term in office, uh, you know, I made a commitment. Our, our national chairman had come to the convention, and I got my committee to commit to doubling the size of our party. And the amazing thing is they actually did it. And when I went into the 2017 convention, besides having a whole bunch of new faces that didn't know me, and they, you know how that is, they always figure the problem's got to be the chair, we had 22 organized counties. So, and I got, and at my re-election, I also got a, a fantastic team, new vice chair that she's just, she is just doing incredible work. Now, the for whole team is, and we're now at 26 organized counties. So for people who aren't familiar with the Libertarian Party or how we're organized, what does it mean to organize a county? What's the significance well, of that? the significance of it is that uh, you can only run candidates for county level or below, like someone for county council or for sheriff, if you're organized in that county in our state. If you are, we have full ballot access, which means the Republicans and Democrats have a primary. There'd be hundreds, if not thousands. I know in Charleston County to run for register of deeds was something like $5,000 fee just to file for office for them. We have a convention, costs our candidates nothing. We have a candidate on the ballot. We don't petition. No one, no one objects to what we file. They don't try to throw us off the ballot. We just, our candidates get on the ballot. Now, unfortunately, they get, they get the press and promotion of primaries because they, there's right. more press for that. So they ignore our candidates until the general election. But in some counties, for example, Charleston, I'll say that because my home county, our candidates in local elections are more than the margin of victory between Democrats and, and Republicans, which means we're influencing races. In 2006, our candidate statewide for superintendent of education got three times the margin of victory between the Democrat and Republican statewide. And in fact, we overturned the election. So in our state, we aren't winning many races yet. We've got, we've got one of the 50 mayors in the country, but we are influencing elections and we're seeing new members all the time. I mean, I had three new members call the phone number this week, uh, last week while we were coming down here. And we're getting, and it's mostly a combination of older activists who'd, who'd gone dormant for a while coming back and a lot of young people. And the young people are energized, they're enthusiastic, and we're getting them involved. So three or four people come contact from us from a county. We'll put the notice in the paper. We'll have their convention. They're organized. All we got to do is fill out, you know, a little piece of paper, send it to the clerk of court that says we've elected a chair, and now we can run candidates for office. Okay, so we've got to make an important distinction here because most states, and it varies, of course, yep. the, every state does different things to try to disadvantage third or independent parties, yep. whatever. And uh, so when you, in most counties organizing a county for the libertarian party is just get three people to show up yeah. be a group and yeah. now you're a county organization but what you're talking about in south we carolina a is a legal state. criteria legal to be recognized by, by the county government by the, by the, no by the state government okay. because see, they they actually recognize the state party but for us as a state party to be organized in a county we have to put a notice in the paper three weeks out then two weeks out we have to hold the convention somewhere in the county it's open to the public we elect, we, you know, you do the whole, uh, you know, elect a temporary president of the convention, then the permanent president of the convention, then, then you elect your chair. And it may be three people standing there, but you go through the process, you write it down, you keep notes, you turn it into the secretary of state, and we're legal, and we can run candidates, and we have ballot access for anything. So if someone decides they want to run for county council, they go to the election commission, just like the Republicans, they file their paperwork, they're on the ballot at our convention, we nominate them. We do have NOTA. NOTA has won several <laughs> times recently uh, because sometimes somebody who's just, you know, we've had Democrats oh, or Republicans I, I, walk in and just, they aren't us, we noted them. I, I got to explain this to people who aren't familiar oh, with this. Okay. Part of the Libertarian Party culture is that we have it in our none bylaws. Of none of the above is on every single ballot. Every and this isn't just ballot. so, the, the whole idea of, well, you have to choose the lesser evil, we absolutely reject that and we build it into our organization yeah. bylaws and culture so that we would rather have 
uh, we'd rather have nobody representing the party than have a bad person representing the party, someone who doesn't represent and our core principles. And in fact, the Election Commission honors that because it's not like the Republicans or Democrats where if one person files, they automatically don't even have a primary. They, they, get, they get the ballot line in November. If we have one person file, it goes to the convention, and we pick NOTA, they're not on the ballot. So the Election Commission honors none of the above as, our, as part of our process. So it's actually pretty good. I mean, okay, we're not winning yet. Although I will personally say that I consider Mark Sanford, who's our current congressman in the 1st Congressional District, to be about as libertarian in Congress as you can get. Well, hey, look. <laughs> If, uh, you, you may Dr. Just, Paul set the standard pretty high. Yeah, but he's also the one who Dr. Paul considers a very good friend and at one point considered to be his heir in Congress. So, yes, I said, I meant in Congress. <laughs> okay, when I said in Congress, I was talking about today, not when Dr. Paul was in Congress. Okay. Uh, no, he's a good guy and, uh, you know. Maybe you can swing him, maybe, because we, like, we recently had Brandon Finney in New Hampshire, who's a when state rep. Posted? Um what well, could be uh, next couple of weeks? Uh, well, you may have something to follow up on by then. Oh, very exciting teaser. May, All right. We may have signed a resolution that may be getting delivered to him this week. All right. All right. Well, we'll be paying attention but, for but that. You know, that. That may or may not have happened. All right. <laughs> well, Stuart, just then, well, I got to say, before, before I ask you one last question, yeah. I, I want the audience to understand that this might sound a little inside baseball, might sound a little nerdy, yeah, yeah, yeah. but but this is the, the hard work behind the scenes. And, you know, we say hard work. It's not that hard. I mean, you fill out yeah. a couple of forms. You show up to some meetings. There's no, yeah. there's no sweat involved except here in New Orleans. No, and, and once a month you got to hold a county meeting. Yeah. Yeah, and you take minutes. And, and a, lot of, a lot of people who are libertarians in, 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 at heart are, are in, inherently repulsed by yeah. paperwork yeah. and okay. interacting with government okay. at all. But what I want to point out is that what this allows is for a candidate to say, I got a free platform to spread my ideas. Yeah, and I, and, so, yeah, and I can run. There's so much free PR in running for office. Why would you ever turn down that opportunity when all you have to do is get a little organized, get a few people together? Yeah. So, Stuart, last question then. Yeah. I'll make it a two for a double question here. Uh -oh. How did you become a libertarian, and what about that motivates you to keep standing up for the party and the message today? Um, okay, this is about a two minute answer. Is that too long? Hit it. All right. Well, actually, I was what you would call a Goldwater Republican. And in 2005, I'd been active in the Republican Party to the point that I was actually the last chairman of the city of, Repu of Charleston Republican Party. We defeated Mayor Riley on a one cent sales tax. He spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. We spent 10 grand. We beat him. He outlawed political parties. Well, a few years later, and I was a Goldwater Republican in the South is a libertarian, all right? By our definition in South Carolina, someone in the party 10 years ago said they were Goldwater Republican. That was code for libertarian, all right? And uh, the local party uh, stopped fighting against taxes. They started running candidates that were, uh, well, let's just say, when you sit in a meeting and a candidate says Hitler is his role model and that black people are animals, you kind of tend to walk out, don't you? And uh, uh, you better. Well, I had one of these days. It was a Monday. It was Valentine's Day, 2005. At six o'clock in the evening, my mother died. Or my sister called and said she died. I, I did local radio then. When I got off my show at seven, I went to the state to the county committee meeting. Walk in, and they're talking to about this candidate, and he's talking about animals meaning black people for him, and that they didn't deserve the right to vote, and talks about Hitler being a role model when he grew up. And then the county party chair gets up and says, I want you to all raise your hand and swear you won't tell anyone how we'll win this election. And I got up and I left and I've never looked back. Wow. And two days later, I joined the Libertarian Party. And I, heck, a year later, I was on the National Committee and served three terms, never looked back. Philosophically, I was always a minarchist by the you know, I'll let you explain that to them, but I'm not, I agree with anarchists that I don't like government. I just don't believe we can get rid of it. And well, I if you, if, if you agree with the principle, people. but there's the thing is the principle is what matters. If it, it doesn't matter how you see, this is the unity resolution we're right. working on for this convention. Say if, if 
w if you believe in the non-aggression principle, yes, absolutely. W you are welcome here, no yeah. matter what your vision and, and of I a voluntary world absolutely. might look like. Absolutely. You want you want a socialist commune or a communist well, commune? If it's formed voluntarily, you want a minarchist society. You want you know we're not going to fight over that. You don't force it on anyone. Exactly. As yeah. long as you fo don't force them. And you know my argument with some of my friends who are hardcore anarchists like Mark Hinkle from California is we look forward to the day that we got to discuss whether we've cut enough government. We won't have to. We'll have it localized and everybody will get what oh, they want. Well, of, co well, of course. But then you've got to worry about what's the definition of local and who has decided on local, and who's agreed on local, and what the scope of local is. Come on, man. You know, you know where it goes. Well, the, the answer local, is the line is, is it voluntary or not? Block. Local might your, be your block in your neighborhood. Is that a government? I support that block's right to secede and be sovereign on their own now property. You're, you're talking to someone who lives in Charleston. Don't use the word secede. <laughs> Fair enough. I understand that has some other loaded connotations, but it is as you know, that is what unites us. That core principle: yeah. is it voluntary? It is, is it not? Because, because I tell you, you know, I would have thought before I joined the party, 14 years ago now, that you know the anarchists would be my enemies. No, some of my best friends in the party are what I call a rational anarchist, someone who wants to get there by changing the direction rather than just stomping their foot and saying, get rid of government tomorrow, get rid of government tomorrow, get rid of all taxes tomorrow. And the public won't buy that. The public won't listen to that. But the ones that are rational say, okay, how do we turn it back? How do we reduce government? How do we get rid of this thing they're doing that's bad? And, and that's the direction we're all moving in. And that's what gets us where we all want to get to, which is, you know, no oppressive treatment. Taxation, absolutely, it's theft. Absolutely. It's extortion. But we, if we shout it out in the street without doing anything to solve it, we don't get anywhere. So it's, so, and there are a lot of libertarians who are, who are moving towards solving rather than just shouting in the wind. And as we see here, coming together in a really oh, beautiful you know, this, way. This is, a, this is a great convention. I'm really glad to see Nick win. Uh, he's got a young vice chair. You know, we'll see how he does. I mean, if he does his job, which is to help the chair, he's going to succeed. Well, it looks like our very short lunch time is coming to an end. LP.org, join us. You want to plug the party of South Carolina? Well, if you live in South Carolina, call us. <laughs> we'll be there. What's the website? Uh, uh, SCLP.org. Thank you very much, Stuart. Appreciate right, it. Thank you very much.